Hello everyone. Good morning. Hi Nitya. Hi Jayashree. Hi Kartik. Hi Kartik. All right, let's start our class today. And if people want to join, then join. So today, we are going to start on day 31st. So this is the agenda for today's class. We are going to talk about hash table class, properties class, and dictionary class, which is an abstract class. Okay. So the hash table class is something like, uh, I want to tell you how it actually works so that like guys will understand whatever we learned so far, uh, hash map and all those stuff, right? So how it internally works, you'll get in a note of it. And properties class is very, very important because uh, you are going to, uh, definitely going to use in your application in any of the web applications. And dictionary class we rarely used, but we have for knowledge purpose, we have to learn it. So let's get, let's get started. So th we know that this is a collection framework diagram. We usually start with where we have nine key interfaces we have. So we have a collection interface underneath we have list set and queue and map. So list means it up it allows duplicates and inches not is maintained. Set means it won't allow duplicates, it won't maintain the inches order. And uh, it actually do by sorting, by default sorting, which means like sorted set. If you want to have more methods for navigation, then you have to go for navigable set. Similarly, map is for key value pair. Duplicate keys are not allowed, duplicate values are allowed. And if you want to go by sorting the data based on keys, then you can go for sorted map. And if you want to get extra methods for navigation, then you can go for uh, navigable map, right? The same thing, whatever you learn. So now it's time to learn about hash table. So hash table actually comes under map interface. So if you guys see here this diagram, we have a map interface underneath we have hash table class. Underneath we have properties class. So what does it mean? Hash table is a class in Java, which actually implements map interface and extends dictionary class. Dictionary is an abstract class. We have seen in our previous classes, what is a class, what is abstract class, what is interface. So abstract class means, anyone can tell, any idea? What do you mean by abstract class? Only declaration, abstract method. Right. So interface also has the same thing, right? In interface also, you declare all the methods, but you won't define it, right? So there is a difference between interface and abstract class, right? So let's say this is interface, map interface, and dictionary is an abstract class, right? So there is a difference between interface and abstract class. So if you want to make all the methods, whichever you are going to declare inside a, let's say, interface or abstract class, if all are abstract, which means that is interface. But if you think, let's say out of four methods, if you want to declare three methods as abstract and another one as a kind of, you have to define it, then you can go for abstract class. There is a difference between abstract class and interface. Okay. So here hash table is a class which implements map interface and actions dictionary class. Okay. Now let's get deeper into that. So map interface underneath we have hash table class which implements map interface and actions dictionary class. So whenever we see any class in collection framework, there should be some underlying data structure will be there. But for any interfaces, there won't be any data structures, right? Because interface is nothing but the specifications, right? But class is nothing but blueprint, which means like it, it where they define a lot of methods and logics. So since a hash table is a class in Java, there is underlying data structure. The underlying data structure in hash table is nothing but hash table itself. Okay. So let me start from the beginning. So whenever we say in whenever we we study about any class in Java, you guys see here hash table T is not capital. T is small. There is no camel case. All right. So the underlying data structure is nothing but hash table itself. As table is the underlying data structure. Okay, then what we will learn, we will see what are the different properties, right? Common properties of this particular class, right? Assuming that, like you know, we'll see duplicate keys are allowed or not because of it's a hash table, right? Because it's coming under map, 
as we seen earlier map itself is key value pair so what is under map is nothing but key value pair so since hash table is a class which is under map interface which means hash table also stores key value pair right so if you see here then we will see the properties of how it stores the data how it allows duplicates and null values right keys and null values if you guys see here it won't allow the inches order the reason is that the reason is that it won't allow it it won't maintain the inches order because there is a hash in the name or i can say hash here whenever you see something hash it means it stores the data based on hash code of the keys what it will do whenever i say hash code of the keys first it will apply the hash code you guys remember there is a method called hash code in java right so you first will apply the hash code for that particular keys okay and then what are the value it comes based on the value it will arrange the data it won't do by inches order so that is the reason it won't allow the inches order and duplicate keys won't be allowed because let's say you have two key let's say one and one and if you see one and one means key is one one let's say you are storing something like this okay so you are storing one key comma value okay so key is one comma karthik okay and next again you are storing one comma let's say java so if you guys remember here it is actually storing the data because of hash table it is storing the data based on the hash code of the key what it will do first it will apply the hash code method on this particular key one so the hash code of, the hash code of one is let's say one so on the first bucket it will allocate it will sorry it will put the map uh, it will put the value as karthik so second time what it will do again if you say one comma java again it will apply the hash code method over here so hash code of one is nothing but the same let's assume that the same bucket wherever it is then it will put the same java so then it means karthik is replaced with java so this is the reason when we have, whenever we say these guys won't allow duplicate keys or duplicate objects this is how actually it happens is it clear for you guys internally how it works if someone ask you how do you say that hash table don't allow duplicates duplicate keys this is what the logic the technical proof okay and values it can allow because values it is not applying the hash code it is going to apply the hash code method only on the keys okay so that is the reason keys won't make a duplicates and heterogeneous objects keys and values are allowed and null keys won't be allowed because it is using key dot hash code right it is using the hash code of this so it won't allow and if you use it in the values it will throw null pointer exception i will i will show you that and as always we know that all the classes inside the collection framework is by default implementing serialized interface interface and clonable interface. so let me start from the basic class uh, let me start writing the program let me this okay so let me close all my previous class examples let me start from the scratch so new class let's say has table demo all right so actually i was thinking based on the slides we have since you guys will be using the slides going forward so better i can create the uh, examples based on the slides what i have so that you guys can understand and compare it here i can say the same thing okay has table let's equal to new has table inside that i will create uh, i will add this objects based on this example what i have okay so basically what i am doing has table if you guys see here this t is not caps okay this exception let's t is equal to new has table and also i will tell you why they didn't create this hash table with a capital t the reason is that this hash table was created since java 1.0 okay when this java created when the people the authors these guys created this java language they are not following up all the classes with the standards camel case so that is the reason hash table was very very legacy class and they didn't mention proper naming convention here okay there is a reason so now i want to say let's state that put 
I will add the key value pair based on what I have here. Okay. So here, what I'm doing is ht dot put off new employee of 10 comma USA, new employee of 200 comma India like that. So what does it mean? New employee of something. What does it mean? It means I am creating an object of employee class and then add that here, isn't it? So assume that let's say I have a class called employee has table something like that because i think employee class uh, already have in my <coughs> package so it will throw compile time error so for that reason i'm creating like this so what we typically do once we create a class you will define your own constructor what is the constructor like this right same class name and method with nothing right this is a default constructor default constructor now i want to pass employee id and then using that one i want to create let's assume that int emp id okay and then you are creating one more constructor by which accepts integer which accepts integer let's say emp id okay what you have to do this dot emp id equal to emp id you guys remember this one we have learned sometime back whenever someone calls creating object of this class by passing the employee id it is going to create an object of this class employee hash table with employee id value will be assigned based on whatever they are sending it to define this particular to refer to the current class we have to use this method this keyword you guys remember we are used uh, we have learned this one earlier so what i'm trying to do here is i'm going to say put new i want to store an object as a key and value i can say usa let's say usa this object i am going to pass let's say 100 so what does it mean so ht has table dot port here I'm saying new employee has table of, which means I'm going to create an object of this class because new is the keyword used in Java to create a new object of class what? Basically, this line is same as like this. This line is same as like this. Either way, you can write it. Okay, you can write it like this also. This line is exactly same what I did here. Now you guys can remember or understand this one. What I'm doing here. First I'm creating a hash table, right? And then I'm creating an object of this class. And then that object I'm passing it here, the key. The same thing what I did, instead of doing this assignments or object reference, what I did, I simply take this new constructor everything and then put it here so that we don't need everything here is it clear jayashree uh, nitya so far yeah, so the reason why i'm having <coughs> this employee id i'm passing we know that we are going to we know that hash table is going to use hash code of this object or the key isn't it so we will see how it actually stores okay so whenever i say it is going to apply hash code of this particular object or the key which means what is this key key is nothing but object of this class right so then in this class will have hash code method right you guys remember hash code method you guys remember this hash code method in a class where you have to order over it. Yeah, over it. You guys can see this one. Your class have hash code method and two string method. If you don't know how to write this, what you can do simply in Eclipse, right click, source, generate hash code and equals method. Or you can define which method you want. 
which method you want you can select it and then generate if you guys see here this hash code method has been created and equals method has been created we don't want to go for equals method now we simply want to use hash code method the reason is that the reason is that because we know that hash code hash table is going to use first it is going to apply this hash code method of this particular object and then it is going to use that one to store the data right so for that reason i am going to override this public int hash code of here i am going to say what anyone can any idea i am going to return the employee id so what happens here when hash table dot put of new employee hash table of 100 whenever it comes first the flow comes here new employee hash table of 100 where it will go this this piece of code isn't it so then this dot employee id equal to employee id so what does it mean this 100 has been passed as an argument here and this has been assigned to this employee id which is nothing but this employee id so one new object has been created for this class with employee id equal to 100 this variable value em emp id equal to 100 then what it will do it will apply hash code method of this particular object so hash code of this object is nothing but what return emp id which means this method when this line of good uh, this line of code is executed key is nothing but 100 and value is nothing but usa isn't it is it clear similarly i am going to say i think i have did like 200 here 200 let's say india and let's say 50 which is nothing but uh, let's say canada and uh, let's say 1000 i can say australia and i can say 600 i can say singapore there are some folks from singapore also joined the class i don't know the singapore is s a n g okay okay so now what happens if i try to print this is out of ht let's go and run this program i want to show this first if you guys see here employee hash table at the rate of something is equal to australia employee hash table at the rate of 58 is equal to singapore so what does it mean so the key is something but here the key is something but the hash code of this one so what we have to do is we have to override the two string method if you want to change something like you want to have your friendly name so if you guys see here i have override this two string also there is a two string method also in the class so these methods are coming from all the class you guys remember like we have learned very beginning of the class course uh what are the different types of methods we have in object class hash code equals two string all those stuff right so i am going to override this two string whenever i say um employee object name itself i am going to override this name so what i should do instead of instead of object itself coming i will say two string i am going to say two string of return this is actually string data type emp id plus some space so now if i go and run this program you guys see here 10000 equal to australia 600 equal to singapore 50 equal to canada 200 equal to india 100 equal to usa so based on the hash code so now i will write the program i mean i am going to run the same program in debug mode so you guys will understand how these buckets are getting allocated how this is storing in this order okay are you guys ready let's start so i am going to run the same program in debug mode so in the debug mode okay i have to first follow this and then i have to make a bookmark okay now my the piece of code is in the line of 7 right line number 7 now i'm going to execute this one if you guys see here so far nothing is there isn't it you guys don't see anything the moment i execute this piece of code line number 7 you guys see here hash table has been created hash table has been created in the stack memory
here and let me execute this line now if you see it is stored under the bucket of zero okay it's stored in the bucket of zero so what happens here is a hash table has been created which will have key value pair if you guys see the slide the previous slide where i mentioned about hash table let's say you go to new hash table of right so what does it mean i said like 11 and 575 so which means it will create buckets 0 to 10 okay so if you guys see here it actually starts from 0 here sir so 0 to 10 so first it will apply so basically it will apply the modular function here what does it mean in our in our case what happens is 100 right so the hash code of this particular first uh, entry is nothing but what 100 so 100 modular 11 100 modular 11 similarly 200 modular 11 11 is nothing but the default capacity the default capacity of this hash, hash table 0 to 11 0 to 10 right so whatever the output of this one the 100 modular division 11 so whatever the number it comes let's say it's 0 right or whatever it comes based on that it will choose this bucket it will be between like 0 to 10 isn't it you guys can see here maybe this is uh, very pretty much clear here the variables you can see that can you guys see here uh, understand this concept so in this case 10 200 150 300 i i applied here right so what happens is 10 modular 11 which is 10 200 modular 10 11 2 which means it will be stored in the second bucket if this record will be stored in the first bucket if two records in the store the same bucket it will be in the list within the same bucket so that is the reason you are seeing the output like even in our case if you see see this is stored under bucket one okay and if i run this one okay this is stored under bucket two see that is how it comes. These are the internal structure how it stores the data. And thousand equal to Australia. This one six hundred equal to Singapore. This one fifty equal to Canada. This one two hundred equal to India. And this one hundred equal to USA. This is how it stores the data. Is it clear, everyone? Is it clear for everyone? Yes. Yeah, so this is the internal structure of how the hash table works. Okay. Anyhow, we are going to learn the same thing in the upcoming class also, how hash map works, how hash table works. But this is the underlying structure of hash table. Now you will see this one. So what are the different types of constructors we have with respect to hash table? So one is a default constructor, which means by default we have 11 and 0.75 you can also create with your own size or capacity you can define the constructor also you can update the fill ratio and the insert capacity right and if you want to convert from any other maps to hash table we can pass it so there are four types of constructors we have based on the requirement you can use it now if you see here right so insert and order is not maintained we have seen the proof isn't it insert and order is not maintained right and Duplicate keys are not allowed. Let's assume I will say instead of this one, I will say HT dot this of 600 with. Let's assume that I can say New Zealand. Now let me go under this program. If you can see here, 600 equal to New Zealand, 600 equal to Singapore, right? So which means duplicate keys are not allowed, and heterogeneous keys allowed. Null values are not allowed because you cannot add um, you cannot have uh, null and by default you know that it allows it it implements serialized interface and clonable interface 
okay this is all about hash table and if you guys want to explore the same program you can run it and you can see how it goes in your output is it clear for you guys now let's move on to the second topic what is classes properties class so uh, this is very very important definitely you will be using this one in your uh, real world programming because uh, wherever you write a, any java program there is a place that you have to pass some value which is like let's say uh, you are writing one program and you want to execute that program in your local and uh, you want to connect that program to your database let's assume that in your project you have three different uh, environments you have dev qa uat and prod let's say four environments you have so every environment the database details will be different isn't it so every environment database connection details will be different and passwords are different so your program whatever the uh, java program you are writing it let's say you are using jdbc connectivity to connect your database and create that as a jar file okay so that jar file let's say you are giving to your dev team or your uh, devops people they are deploying in your dev uh, server and assume that the program is working fine and tomorrow once the dev development is completed unit testing is completed and you want to deploy that same jar file into qa environment so how you can do that if you use the same jar file then the jar file is having connections details to dev database right you have to update to qa database so what you have to do here is you are not supposed to hard port anything in your java program first of all that is a very basic uh, design principle right so let's say you have a dot java file and jar file whatever you have java file will be converted to dot class file and you are compiling into a jar file and you have to put it in your server tomorrow let's say there is a password change then what you have to do you have to again in your uh, eclipse you have to change the password the new password and again you have to export as a jar file and deploy it and then restart now what is the industry is going in a serverless architecture serverless architecture is the future or even right i can say present model is serverless architecture especially in aws or any other cloud technologies there are a lot of uh, cloud uh, serverless architecture is there which means you don't even see any downtime you don't even know where it is running it's entirely serverless which looks like there is no server but definitely there is server is there but it looks like server no server that is the reason they name it as serverless so if you write a program like this for anything if you want to change it you are doing some change and then restarting server it doesn't makes good so in order to achieve this kind of uh, difficulties we should not do any hard code in your program and also whenever you move from one program one environment to another environment you should not go and touch your class files to come uh, change the database details or what not and then again recompiling to jar file and then restart and then deploying blah 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 things no not required so that is the reason we have to make it like a properties okay properties are nothing but it's a class in java which is a child uh, child class of hash table okay basically the use of this uh, properties class is to hold the information if anything you want to give it to the java object you can give it in the properties file which will be taken into java object based on how to uh, how you are writing a program you can retrieve the data whatever is defined in the properties file and then you can use it in your java program so whenever there is a change let's say tomorrow there is a change in the password of dev database you can simply go and update the properties file so updating the properties file you don't need to compile and uh, recompile into jar file and uh, do deployment and server stuff right because you are not touching a dot java file whenever there is a change in the dot java file you have to compile into dot class and then jar file and then server stuff but if you touch the dot properties file you don't need to do any restarts or nothing because that is not relevant to the core file so in order to achieve this kind of feature in java oracle team they created a class called properties that is underneath of hash table is it clear now why we need this properties class to learn and how it will looks like okay so now we will see how to use this properties class so assume that you are reading something from the properties class file to your java program let's say you have something called db.properties okay and then you have demo.java now you have to give the db details here 
and you want to read it here and then you have to manipulate or what not you are doing it so let's say this properties file should be a key value pair okay which is nothing but string string both should be string key and value should be string only let's say you are giving let's say user id equal to karthik password equal to mysql like that right so similarly you have to give whatever the data you want to pass it to the program so if you guys see here in typical application in like a spring boot application we have application hyphen dev dot properties application hyphen qa dot properties so all the qa related properties will be defined in that one and all the dev related properties will be defined in the application hyphen dev dot properties and these are like a profiles when you go to the upcoming classes of uh, learning spring boot microservices i will explain but for now you guys think this is the base to understand how it internally works when you go to spring boot application classes we will learn just to use that properties file to uh, have the value but how it works is what we are learning now this is the time that you have to use opportunity to learn how it works internally so whenever you have like key value pair here so that properties if you want to send it to your java class which means you are reading the data from the properties file to your java program then what you have to do first you have to create an object of this class properties p equal to new properties of and then you have to load it first okay which means like you have to use p dot load which means it will be loaded from properties file into your java file okay and then on top of it you have to get the property let's say p dot get property of username p dot get property of password which means the key you have to pass the key then it will give the value okay so based on that you can get the key value pair and also you can able to set the value also here back in the same properties file that is also possible so for that you have to first set the property and you have to store it loading means you are loading from properties file to java program storing means storing from java program to properties file back it's other way around if you want to get all the list of properties then you can say p dot property names now let's see how it works so properties class is what we have learned so far and how to get an object we are going to read here and we are going to see how to use uh, read the file and then how to load how to store and how to get the properties okay so if you guys see here this is our uh, project java project right and then we have properties uh, sorry packages right so in this package let's say you have a uh, class and the same package level you have to create let's say course details dot properties something like that anything you can say db dot db dot properties or what not okay and whatever you create here first you have to read it from here to java program so how you can read it how you will dump it from the file into java program nothing but load using load which is nothing from load is a method from properties class so for that we have to create an object of a properties class so properties p equal to new properties of first you will create a properties object class and then we have to use this one p dot load of what you have to load the file isn't it so file means file input stream right so that you are going to create an object for a file input stream and then that object you are going to pass it here it's kind of chaining you guys can see chaining right so first you are creating object of properties class and then you are creating an you want to use the load load method load method accepts file input stream so file input stream means you have to create an object for the file input stream which is nothing but file input stream fis equal to new file input stream of then you have to give the file name right it has to understand which file it has to read all right so that's why you are giving pose it as a properties so once it loads it means it's all dumped into here if you guys see here if i run it whatever i uh, whatever i loaded here so course equal to java channel name equal to let's just check environment equal to prod1 course id equal to name something like that this is what i had in this properties file now i can able to read from here we say display the data from the file of p p means nothing but properties object right now i may be read whatever it has key value pair from the file is it clear so far uh guys properties yeah yes perfect now after that if i say just to get the property of particular channel name see i know in the in my file i have three properties or four properties channel course channel name environment course id but if i want to get the value of channel name then i have to say p dot get property of the key this is a key this is a value 
we know in java if you want to get a value then you can say get get a status methods right so get property of channel name then it will give let's check you can see here the output is the output is let's check okay this is how you can able to get it if you want to set back the value if you want to set some value back so you can also do that p dot set property of p n value let's say right now i have environment equal to prod 1 right uh i think i it was having something else before but i ran it twice so i can see the same thing so if you say environment comma prod 2 here then what will happen if you run this program it will set this property here but this property has to be written back to the file right so for that you have to use p dot store method so this store method accepts two things one is the file which where you have to write it or overwrite it and also some comment who updated it or whatever some description about it so for that file output stream you have to create and you have to give the same path name is it clear can you go and write start from the scratch the properties maybe we can regroup in 2 minutes and then we will start writing the class from the beginning uh, the properties class and we will start so that you guys can see this example live then we yeah, can discuss in the next session okay okay let's stop here and we will regroup in 2 minutes and then we will start writing a program to start reading uh, properties and writing back and then also we will continue with the dictionary class also uh and then we can end up for today okay thank you so much guys thanks for joining today bye okay so now we are going to start writing the class um which is nothing but uh, for testing our uh, properties class right so i'm going to start from saying properties demo oops properties demo okay so this is the class which i want to create it okay so here i want to create in my package if you guys see here here i created something called a uh, course detail start properties right so let me start creating something called uh, let's say db Let's say I can create some file called uh, db dot properties. That file extension should be in properties. Okay, dot properties. So now you guys see here. Uh, let's get it here. Okay, db two dot properties. let me start creating here or i can create a new package okay and then it i have class called properties demo you guys can see the use of uh, packages because in that de in default package also i created a class called uh, properties demo isn't it you guys see here properties demo right and also if you want to create the same class name in another package i can able to do it there is a user like use of uh, packages so now let me start creating a file here okay now you guys can see here right so now let's assume i have something in the file and i want to read it from the properties let's assume that i have something called uh, username is equal to let's say kartik okay now i want to read it from here so what i should do first properties p equal to new properties of isn't it properties a class in java okay 
properties is a class in Java, which is a child class of hash table. If you guys mouse over here, public class properties sections hash table. Okay. Now what we're trying to do here is we want to first load the data, right? So first means like p dot load of input stream we have to pass. So input stream means what? File input stream because we're reading from the file. So which means file input stream fis equal to new file input stream of then you have to give the file name right so file name is nothing but because since this file is in the same package which is in the class, same class path you can simply do the file name in ed dot properties then this fis object you can pass it here You guys remember like what is happening here uh, before I go and click on this one. Any guess why it is giving some compile time error or something like that? Any idea? Anything wrong here? If you guys remember about exception handling. Exception handling. We have learned. Compile time error, runtime error, compile time exception, runtime exceptions. So here what we're doing in our Java program, we are reading something from the file, right? So there is a chance that the file may not be available. So which means we have to handle that exception. If you guys see here, file not found exceptions. Um, if you guys remember about uh, how to handle those, we are we are learn about those. Now previous uh, classes. Input output exception, file output exception, class not output exception, right? Alright. Yeah. Okay. You handle this scenario where you are reading something from the file by simply giving either throws new exception or give it in the try catch. Either way you can handle it. So now what happens is using this uh, properties object, you are getting it from the FIS and then you are loading it here. So now let me simply print it, whatever got loaded. I want to just see what it got loaded. See, file not found exception, db dot properties, no such file or directory. Why it happens here? If you guys see here, post details are properties, I'm getting like this, right? But here it is giving a problem. Why? Anyone have any idea? If you guys see here, can you guys see the difference here? This properties file should be at the project level. If you guys see here, this hierarchy is at this level. But the class are inside this package. But whatever I created here is inside this package. It should be at the where? Is it here? Now is it here? Can you guys see the differences what I'm doing? How about now? Can you guys see the difference? The error which I am replicating and then fixing it. Can you guys see the difference where we should create this file? Because the reason is that in your application, let's say you are creating a web application, that properties file should be at the application level, not at the each class level or not at each package level, isn't it? Because this properties file should be for the entire application. That is the reason this should be at the package level, sorry, this should be at the application level. I purposely put it inside, I want to replicate the issue, when then I keep on moving, moving, then you guys will remember the scenario, so you won't forget where you have to put this properties file. Is it clear for you guys? Yeah. Okay. Now you are able to read it. See, username equal to Karthik. Let's assume you're having something called db name is equal to, let's say, dev. Okay. Then db password is equal to, let's say, password. Something like this. Now, without making any change, if I go and run this program, I'll be able to get all the data. 
did they make any change in the java file no isn't it because in tomorrow if you want to change this password from password to password one without making any change in the java file if you go and simply run this you will see password one here right so which means if you want to give any value to your program through properties you can able to do it without making any change to your java class there is no change in java class means there is no change there is no need to create a dot class file then there is no need to rebuild your program or your project no need to create a new jar file no need to deploy it no need to restart it right if this is very very helpful if you go for uh, any desktop based applications if you write it you have to understand how you are going to pass the value dynamically without hard coding in your program now let's see how you are going to set it something back to your program uh, to your class sorry your uh, properties file so for that what i should do i should say is dot store of so here it expects something called output stream and string comments so comments i can say updated during live class okay so this output stream right output stream is something but file output stream if os equal to new file output stream of what the same file you are going to update isn't it so then you have to give same file name is it clear now you are going to say you are going to say fos here okay but what you are going to say uh, update here you have to first set something isn't it so what you have to say p dot set property of let's say username i want to change it to instead of karthik i want to change it to karthik1 but this is string value right so you have to pass it in a string this is also string so here i am telling hey on this property wherever it is using set the property of username as karthik1 let's go and run this program print update what happened here can anyone tell me if you guys see here can anyone tell me what happened this is actually printed from here this line number 16 but whatever is updated here is updated in the where the properties class file properties file right so whatever you are seeing here is nothing but the original value which is coming from here line number 16 but whenever you set it whenever you store it it store directly in the properties file itself you can see here username is karthik1 and comment has been added automatically updated during live class and time also is it clear for you guys how to use the properties class in java and how to get some data from outside world to java class and how to do from java into some file if you want to write it the properties file any any more expression required understand this concepts you know if you guys have any question all good sir thank you okay great now let's move on to the last topic of today it is dictionary class okay so dictionary is karthik uh, i have uh huh go ahead sorry karthik yeah one question actually this is not relevant to this one but uh, we do have a properties file into bert as, as well right which one so uh, when we design bert report right that time also we are having properties file uh huh so there also it is having you know same purpose like storing the the in bert also we have the same purpose but the thing is uh, uh, mm-hmm. it, it uh, whenever you design a bert report that whenever mm-hmm. you create a new project of bert that underlying framework itself will decide that whenever you have something called dot properties it will use mm-hmm. that file as a input and from there you can pass it and you can use it inside your program 
that is one of the best example that you can say yeah like uh, out, out of uh, uh, open source uh, platform which we can try but typical example where we use in our real time projects is something like as i mentioned here because you have yeah, yeah. moments different uh, every 3 months so there will be a complaints that you have to change the password right so you don't need to yeah. reply redeploy and do restart kind of stuff right and nowadays actually we are not using uh, application properties file to store the properties uh, i mean uh, uh, any hash um, usually password credentials okay there are a lot of uh, vulnerabilities over there because if you mm-hmm. see you have your application okay you have your application here let's assume that this what of the package we created right this on on application okay properties demo you have one java file on properties file in this file if you have like something like kartik if someone get this project they will know what the mm-hmm. pro- what the password is there right so yeah. now when i say since i work on some cloud technologies uh aws gcp so there is a new product called um, hashcorp there is a company called hashcorp uh what they do is uh, using a there is a separate system where they have there you will be storing all the user id passwords and it will be always by encrypted by uh, one way one way encryption which means you cannot decrypt for sure okay and then your java mm-hmm. application you can directly get it from there but application dot uh, properties files are used uh, mainly in the spring boot application to tell some other de- details let's say uh, what is the environment name all those stuff but not like credentials okay but the underlying logic okay. is to store from uh, java to the properties file or properties file to java how you are going to use it is same what it is yeah yeah okay is it clear is it can you move on yeah yeah yes yes okay so now we are going to see dictionary class okay so dictionary is a class in java as i said like it is kind of a if you see the hierarchy dictionary is a class here but it is actually it's not coming under collection framework if you guys see here even map is also not exactly coming under collection framework if you guys go to uh let's say the default one where we have a lot of classes right uh where we have hash map demo or what not right let's say if you go to hash map class which extends map interface if you go to map interface just interface right map is interface it didn't come from collection interface you guys notice here so this map interface is not coming under collection interface this map interface is not coming under here the way how we put the diagram here list set to queue this and all coming under collection interface but map is not coming under collection interface isn't it but since we are dealing with more than one one object which means collection that is the reason we are reading we are learning map and all related things don't think like map interface is under collection interface map interface is a stand alone if you guys see here public interface map that's all we didn't implement any interface or didn't action any interface sorry is it clear yeah okay now if you guys see here the hash table hash table is what we are looking at right so hash table is a class which is coming under dictionary abstract class and map interface now we will see what is dictionary abstract class so if you guys see here the dictionary class basically this is a, a stand alone class which is abstract class okay and uh, there is a relationship between dictionary and hash table the the relationship is uh, dictionary is an abstract class which means it can contain abstract methods as well as concrete methods so why can't we start writing a program and i will show you how that internally it contains so i'm going to say dictionary demo and where i'm going to say dictionary d is equal to hash table of okay now if i go to the dictionary class if you guys if you guys see here public abstract class dictionary which is nothing but key value pair it also is to store key value pair but it is stand alone 
this also introduced in 1.0 okay this also introduced in 1.0 which is like very basic of when java was uh, evolving so this also created where if you guys uh, have a requirement to store uh, let's say uh, same like how to enumerate and other stuff like iterating the elements you can use it within the dictionary class if i go to dictionary class you see this is a class this is the constructor you guys see here this is an abstract class abstract method okay makes sense okay abstract method okay makes sense if you guys see here all are abstract you guys see here all are abstract isn't it so if you make a class inside a class if you create a class inside a class any method if you denote with abstract then definitely that class should have been mentioned as abstract otherwise it will throw a conflict error which is nothing but when i say compile time error is nothing but what compile time error is nothing but compile is throwing some error saying that this is not correctly matching right so which means we are not following the principles of java programming that is why correct uh, um, compile time error is throwing saying you know hey this is mentioned as abstract your class name should be abstract go and do it like that right so similarly in dictionary class also you can able to add key value pair if you guys see here you can be able to add the same method like put of 100 comma red 200 black all the stuff it will use the same concept okay here i say 100 200 10 right so here i say 100 modulo 11 how it is doing 100 modulo 11 there we used employee object isn't it but here i'm not using employee object i'm simply putting integer values let's say d dot put of d dot put of let's say 100 and value also i can make uh, if you guys want to go here say i can say red and similarly i can say 200 300 right or oh, 210 200 and this is 10 and this is black and white right can we go and print this one how it is stored how it stored the data you guys see here 10 is a white 200 black 100 is red right which is nothing but it applies the same formula here 100 modulo 11 100 nothing but hash code so here you are passing int int isn't it 100 is nothing but int but it do auto boxing it will convert that uh, int int 100 into an integer 100 and then for that 100 it is going to apply the hash code the hash code of 100 is 100 so 100 modulo 11 is 1 200 modulo 11 is 2 10 modulo 11 is 10 so that is why it is printing like this you guys are getting here 10 first and then 200 and then 100 bottom top okay and similar to hash table it won't allow uh, null key because it will throw null point exception uh i put something like this Aha. do that to top let's say something called null and value i can put value i can put something let's say 500, 550, something like this. Let me run this. See, null point exception. It says, like, okay, hash table is 465. This one, because if you guys see here, it is applying the key dot hash code, hash code off. Here, the key is what? Put off key, put off what we are putting? Null. For the null, it is time to apply this hash code. That is what is giving an error. Okay. And uh, if you guys want to get a particular value, you can use get method. It is very simple to use it like how we used for um, hash table, the same one. Okay, and if you, if you guys want to enumerate or iterate inside whatever the element you have, if you want to go one by one, you can use for loop. For enumeration equal to d dot keys. Enumeration we have learned about, right? Already, iterator, enumerator, the same concept. Enumeration equal to d dot keys. 
so it means like you are going to iterate all the keys and if it has more element then print the element so in our case we are going to say for enumeration e for all the keys enumeration uh, control shift o yeah it's gone right if you guys see here for any element here you are want to have iterate or print something whatever the element inside is it clear guys so d dot keys is nothing but 100 200 10 these are the keys right so d dot keys are nothing but 100 200 10 it is going to get it in the enumeration then you can say e dot has more elements whenever it has more elements then you can go inside and then print print what you have to print the next element isn't it so you have to use next element that's all and why it is printing uh, giving error i missed the semicolon you are you guys able to follow Ten, two hundred, hundred. Is it clear? All the elements I can able to see how we have got stored. Only the elements. Ten, two hundred, and hundred. Is it clear for you guys? I think I missed one part here uh, on the hash table. Um, if you guys see here, when we have to go for hash table, more important, right? We have learned hash table how it works internally, but now it's something like we need to know when we should use it. So, as I said earlier, hash table is a class in Java which is like introduced in 1.0, very very beginning. Uh, even I can say I can call hash table as a legacy class. Okay. So, the reason why we should not use hash table is inside a hash table, whatever the methods are there, all are synchronized. All are synchronized. What does it mean? The hash table demo. If we go here. If you go to this Oracle documentation, this hash table class, okay, these are all variables, right? What are we see here? If you see the method, this is a constructor. This is a constructor, constructor, constructor. Yeah, if you see here, there is a keyword called synchronized. Size also synchronized. Is empty also synchronized, and enumeration also synchronized. What not, right? Every method will be an synchronized so in a class if all the methods are synchronized then we can call that class as a thread safe class what does it mean if two threads wants to access the same method if that method is uh, defined with synchronized it means we cannot use this method for multi thread environment which means only one thread can able to access this method and do it only after that first thread completes only then second thread can able to get into here is it clear for you guys what are explaining the new concept so hash table class all the methods inside hash table are defined with synchronized whenever you see synchronized keyword in the method whenever you try to make two more than one thread to access this particular method it won't be possible if you want to restrict more than one thread to access a particular resource then you have to use synchronized keyword this other way of telling it okay since hash table this class was defined by oracle developers in java 1.0 with all the methods are synchronized which means hash table cannot be used in a multi threaded environment where we should not use is in a multi threaded environment because hash table all the methods are synchronized which means thread safe thread safe means not more than one thread can able to access a particular methods which means definitely performance will be lower right which you cannot use like multi threaded you cannot make it possible so performance is lower so whenever you try to read or write you cannot use hash table but in case of search you can use it is it clear for you guys this one i missed it earlier i was to wants to touch up the hash table so hash table we are not using nowadays because of the performance issue we are using hash map and other stuff because whatever you have here the synchronized uh, thing 
you can get it without synchronized which means you can be able to use other classes for multi threaded environment if your requirement says that you won't have a multi threaded environment then you can go for happily go for hashable but nowadays every program what we write is mainly to satisfy multi threaded environment right any questions so far whatever you have learned i think we have covered everything anyone have any questions please let me know all good for you guys uh, everyone understand what are we have learned today at least the concepts i will recommend you guys to start writing a program by going through this one and then see but at least the concepts you guys can able to understand for sure today i hope okay so then on monday we will be going through um let me first right so 30 second class which in which we are going to start learning about hash map hash set hash table this internally how it works okay and monday we will join and then we can start from here based on the script all right guys uh thanks for joining and learning java together and uh, we'll see you on monday have a good weekend have a good day guys thank you everyone bye bye thanks karthik bye good night thank you bye bye